How would they hear except someone preach to them? How would they believe except they hear the word? Because your faith is pregnant in the word you hear. So no word, no faith. You cannot separate the word of God from the work of faith. You are about to move from nothing to something. Amen. From nobody to somebody. Amen. Amen. Thou, O oh Lord, will arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor hey. her. That said time has come. Amen. Believing is a choice. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. I find out today in my studies that one of the Hebrew words for prosperity is shalom. Wow. It means that when God blesses you, it comes with an amount of peace. peace. I am not intend on the first day to preach to you, I want to talk to you. And I want to tell you where we are going. Yes, sir. So, it's going to be more of moving from what I call inside to oversight. advanced knowledge hallelujah because the greatest problem you are going to have is when you don't know where you are going I mean there is nothing painful like driving and you are lost and everybody thinks that you are on the right way because people don't know what is happening to you in the car but you are lost they thought you are just driving and, and, and where we are going one of the things that really make Jesus ministry authentic is that even whilst Everybody has not thought about death. He was talking about his death. He was telling the disciples that as Noah was in the belly of the hill for three days, so the son of man will be in the belly of the earth. He said, as Moses lifted up the serpent, so the son of man will be lifted. Now, it was not sinking. It was not sinking. So the fact that you are in church does not you are hearing. No. Hallelujah. The fact that <laughs> you, you are listening does not mean you are hearing. Because one of the signs I know you are not hearing is that once you hear, you do. And the fact that you are not doing it means that you have not picked it. In fact, one day Jesus, Peter was rebuking him for saying he's going to die. And Jesus has to tell him, get behind me, Satan. It means that what you are saying, you are being possessed and influenced by the devil. So if we don't know where we are going, you will live in apprehension. You will live in anxiety. You will live in fear. And the sad thing is that you will be afraid of what is afraid of you. So look at someone and say, you got to know where you are going. You have to know where you are going. A pastor friend called me from the United States and said, man of God, pray for me. And I said, why? I was awful. He's a, he's a pastor and he also works in the medical field. And he said, uh, tomorrow I'm going to take my vaccine. So pray. I say, ah, why do you want me to pray? He said, I'm not too sure what is going to happen. Then I said, Osofu, you should be sure by now. So I told him something. I said, let me preach you a five-minute message. The title of my message is Vaccine or Virus. When I said, he said he doesn't want to hear the message again. He will go and come before he listen. Vaccine or virus? So we are afraid of a virus. We are also afraid of the vaccine. And the reason is because we don't know where we are going. This is the bottom line. No? 
least you know where you are going. Even when you lose your job, you will rejoice. Because you already know where you are going. That's why I'm telling you that God doesn't watch a life match. He watch a replay. Them that he predestined, he call. Them that he call, he justify. Them that he justify, he glorify. So your life was planned before you were born. There is a divine mandate. So as you are walking there, your life has been determined. That's what Jesus said. Pray that, when you pray, tell God that I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means that there is no problem of the will of God for your life in heaven. But on earth, you have an adversary. And the adversary can interrupt it. And divert the course. So there are some of us say we are not where God intends for us to be. We are not there, and it's not God's fault. Listen to me. You can be a billionaire and not to know. You will not know that you are. God can give you things that you are still asking him. That is why there are a lot of prayers we pray. God is silent because the answer has been released. He said, Abraham, listen, I have settled this matter. As for me, my covenant is with you. And I have already made you. But it became Abraham's prayer topic. Who is going to inherit the blessing? Eliezer of Damascus. Bra, 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 bra. Bra, bra, bra. There's nobody. And God said, I have already made you. So when you pray to God, when you pray and talk about this, it's no more in heaven. Some of you are walking in fear. You see, I was in the presence of the Lord. This is where it started. When I started preaching, exactly a year ago, I was in the studio and I started talking about faith and I started dealing with fear and I started talking about nobody should be afraid of the virus as a child of God. Then the Lord came to me and said, no, 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 no. It doesn't end there. They are still going to get the virus anyway. So don't just preach that they shouldn't get because if you preach that, they shouldn't be afraid of the virus and leave it there and they get it. They'll be afraid that that will kill them. So also go back and tell them that even if you have the virus, it's not everybody it can kill. Oh, they are not listening to me. How would they hear except someone preach to them? How would they believe except they hear the word? Because your faith is pregnant in the word you hear. So no word, no faith. It's inseparable. You cannot separate the word of God from the work of faith. So the more word you have, the easier you walk by faith. Now, sometimes, there is no problem with the wastewater going through your sink and passing through the drainage and going out. But the reason the water is coming back into the sink is that the drain system is blocked. So the problem is not the water. The problem is not the pipe. Some things has gone into the drain that has blocked the water. So what's supposed to flow is returning. Watch this. So sometimes you don't need more faith. You must eliminate unbelief. The blocking of the pipe is the unbelief. The faith is the water. It is ready to flow but it's a blocking. That is where fasting comes in. Master, no, 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 no. We are getting too much confused about this. Time. Why couldn't we cast him out? Why? Now, the reason they are saying why is that they've done it before it worked. They send them two by two, they cast out demons. The, the demons are subject to us in your name, but they go, Why this one we could? They say, Because of your unbelief. So, from the time you cast the first demon to this time, unbelief has built up. And the reason it has built up is that you have never cleaned the drain. You have never fasted. Because this kind does not go. Except by fasting and prayer. So when you are entering the devil's kingdom to take back what he has stolen from you, he wastes you. Oh, man. I will say that again for those who pretend reading here. When you go back to the devil and say, hey, I'm coming back to take whatever you stole from me. I have power to take. Satan says, no problem. But to enter the devil's kingdom, there is a scale. When you stand on it, you waste with, mm, you, you are too light. You have been weighed in a balance and you have found one thing. You are too light. This is a matter of 
In the name of the Paul, in the Jesus that Paul preached, I cast you out. The demon said, foolish boy. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Look at your weight on the scale. Look at your neighbor and say, it's possible you are very light. Tell the person you are very light. No, 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 no. Tell the person, it's possible you are very, very, very light. The things you are afraid of, I'm not afraid of it. Because listen, I'm telling you, you are a victim of anything you are afraid of. The devil does not care. If you are, if you are afraid your marriage will collapse, you are a victim. If you are afraid your children will not do that, you will become a victim. Anything you are afraid of, you are a victim of it. This is the bottom line. So the devil could even kill people with coronavirus without touching it with fear. It will never be possible. No. The problem is not the, va- the vaccine. Some are going to take it based on fear. It's not the vaccine. No. If the vaccine is poisonous, it can't touch the one who is filled with the Holy Ghost. No. If the vaccine is poisonous, it has no power with the one who Christ is inside the person. Because you shall drink any deadly thing and it shall in no wise hurt you. So the problem is not what you are afraid of. What is inside you is weak. How do you compare a vaccine or a virus to a venomous poisonous snake? That was fasting into Paul's hand. And everybody was waiting for him to swell and die. And because he didn't die, the barbarians say he's a God. He said he's a God. May you become a God after these three days. Is it not written in your law that he are God? And you are the children of the Most High. But you see, if the word has not gone, you live anyhow. Some of you, eh, the word in Babylon has preached to you more than what you have said. When you come to church with preaching, it's just a, one of those things to satisfy your religious, religious conscience. When you step out there, you listen to all those satanic voices. The things they are saying. So you are tossed. And a double-minded person will not receive anything from the Lord. No, forget it. Today God told me something. I, I, I did an all night. And I slept around 4 o'clock. And he woke me up around 6 and he said, go and continue praying. And it's about prayer, 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 prayer. And you pray, pray, they'll say, you have not reached anywhere. Then he told me something. In the afternoon, I went back to my prayer, I was praying, and he said, son, I know today you are going to talk to your Shunammite, and he started laying something, and I said, tell them, and tell everybody, starting to preach now, I will not lower my standards. Oh, Hit me like something, bam! He said, let it be part of your major message. Tell everybody, I, Jehovah, I will never lower my standard. And he said, I have never lowered it. And it's not because of you people I'm going to lower it. And he added something. Give me, I, 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 I check almost about a scripture. I say, heaven is for overcomers. I will not look at your neighbor and say, God will not lower his standard. No. No. So God is not going to come to the place and say that, oh, if you are fornicating, well, because of the situation we are in, I will consider you. He will not lower his standard. If you are committing adultery, I will consider. He will not lower his standard. No. God will never. You can be his friend, but you wait for you for 30 years to get fit. Oh Lord, you are not ready for this. <laughs> Do you know something? God told me something in a long way. He said, Son, I am the only one who can determine whether you have faith or not. And when your faith meets the requirement of what I have to give to you, and I don't give to you, I have broken my covenant. He said, Even if you are unfaithful, I will remain faithful. That means, listen, one of the things that we can trust in God is Agatha. She's faithful. 
No, listen. He said, if, if you're unfaithful, I will not be unfaithful because you're unfaithful. If you want to be unfaithful, I'll continue to be faithful. So one of the reasons why we can trust him is that he's He doesn't dilly dally. He doesn't say something. He is not a joker. He means what he says and he says what he means. So God, do, no, 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 no. There is no way when you meet the standard, God say, go and come tomorrow. He has never told anybody who is coming to Christ, I come tomorrow. The greatest tragedy I read in the Bible, anytime I read it, I cry. I say, if you don't know God, this thing can be terrible. One day God was judging a king. And one of the judgments was frogs. Frog has invaded Egypt. Go and read it when you go home. And Pharaoh called Moses and said, I will let you go. Tell your God to take away the flocks. And Moses asked him, when do you want me to tell God to take the flock? He said, tomorrow. Go and read it. Find it. You see, Pharaoh said, tomorrow. I said, what are you going to do with the next 24 hours with the flocks? <laughs> oh, you are laughing. That's all me and you. Sometimes we behave. It's another message I'll preach to you. Some of us standing here, our behavior with God is that tomorrow. It is all over the Bible. I know my brother will rise in the resurrection. And the resurrection is standing in front of him. Who said that you have not postponed your miracle? Who said that? There are many things you are blaming God for. When you meet me, you apologize to him. Flocks in your bedroom. Flocks in the toilet, flocks in the kitchen. Moses said, when do you want me to pray that God will take the flock? Pharaoh said, tomorrow. I said, boy. And Moses said to Pharaoh, glory over me. When shall I entreat for thee and for thy servant and for thy people to destroy the flock from thee? And thy house, that they may remain in the river only. Look at it. And he said, To more 24 hours of continuous torment. Now, so when God comes to you, this Shinoma he say, When do you want to meet make you a billionaire? What will you tell him? <laughs> hey, Lord, I'm thinking about it. Oh, haven't you been called people here and ask them, what do you want God to do for you? And they are standing, eh, eh, eh. No, you can come to church, don't know what you want. The father you are in church, that's not you know what you want. There are women here, they don't know the man, they, they don't know the man they have to marry. That's why they are not married. You don't know what you want. No. Vacuum prayers. You don't know what you want. No, 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 no. There are some looking for child, they don't know which child they want. You don't know it. When they go to God, the way they pray, God cannot answer. Because when God answered that prayer, I cannot give him glory. No, give me a man child, then I'll give him to you. If he come a female, it's not from God. So when Samuel was born, Hannah will not struggle to give him to God. This is what I ask. When do you want me to bless you? <laughs> Lord, I'm thinking about it. This man said, tomorrow, and the frost was on his bed. So the next 24 hours, what are you going to do with them? There are so many things in the Bible. Don't ever deceive your terms, you know. Me and you, eh? when you go to God and God starts teaching you the Bible, you see how ignorant you are. You believe as far as you know. The Lord told me, he said, son, <laughs> so you are trying to tell me that you believe and I'm not giving it to you. You believe as far as you know. This is your believing level. And why you claim that you are a champion of believer, you have not even started with me. Do you know something? Guys, we need a lot of humility. Jesus stood in front of a lady crying. If you were here, your brother would have died. Your brother will rise again. Now hear this. They have faith that the man can pray for the brother's sickness to be healed. 
But they don't have faith that he has raised the dead. Do you know it was not the first time Jesus was raising the dead? That's what was not the first time. So there was a rumor about him for raising the dead because the Jewish people say that this man that prayed for the man born blind to get eyes, wouldn't he have healed this one? No problem. It is one thing for Jesus to say, oh, I wish if I knew I could have come in. But he told the woman who was crying, that, stop crying, your brother will rise again. This is what he said, I know. So there are things you know, but you are out of tangent. You see, if nobody, if God doesn't challenge Mary and his sister, they will think that they are gurus of the world. And they have knowledge that their brother will rise in the resurrection. But they don't have knowledge that the man standing in front of him is the master of the resurrection. So hear this. You can stand in front of a heavy duty anointing. God has invested in that anointing for your breakthrough. But you still may not know that this is a contact for my blessing. And there's some interesting thing about God. The way sometimes he does his things is very, very interesting. See, we need revelation. One day, Abraham was sitting in front of his house in the garden, and he saw three men were passing. They didn't even greet him. They just passed in front of his house. Those three men were walking. When you go back to read the Hebrew Bible, one of them was God. I don't want to go to that side. They were passing in front, and Abraham confronted them. And Abraham told them that they should come home and eat. They first them, what is it? Eating for a while. We are not, we are not. And the Bible said they were trying. No, 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 we are not, we are not eating anything, please. Please, if I found favor in your house, please. And he, was a, he came and said, hey, Sarah, hurry, hurry, hurry. Go to the sheep and bring me, tell the boys to get me one seven years ago. Let me kill it myself and dress it. And he said, sir, please. This man were passing. But they carry his prophetic word for Isaac. But they were passing. You can't depend on your job again. It might collapse. Everything is going to change. Everything is going to change. So if you don't know where you are going, you will never get there. You will just be shrinking in the church till Jesus comes and you become one of the foolish virgins. God told me, he said, people will be in the church and will be like the foolish virgin. What are you talking about? The virgins, all of them were virgins. Every one of them is a virgin. The wise and the, the foolish, none of them has seen a man. So when it comes to purity, intact. When it comes to holiness, intact. The difference is extra oil. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. That's all. Extra oil. So the way in a spiritual, you are leaving hand to mouth is a danger. Some of you don't have a vote in a spirit realm. Mm-hmm. The prayer you pray this morning, you must consume it by 6 o'clock. When we say fast, by three days you start vomiting. When they are fear, 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 fear. I'm going to have Yeah. That's what it is. You don't have, you don't have it. No. The way you wake up and you have no prayer and you still walk around, you are behaving like one of the foolish virgins. Because it's not the atmosphere now. The Lord told me something today. He said, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmities. So you see, walking and you are afraid means that your spirit is weak. When you walk and you are afraid, you enter a place and you are smelling. Hand away. Hey, hey. Papa, you are name. We are going to go to the house. No, say, your spirit man is weak. Proverbs, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. So when your spirit is strong, even in the atmosphere of darkness, your light will shine. Is it too strong for you? Give the Lord a better clap off when I'm preaching. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Yeah. In the atmosphere of a thick darkness, your light will shine. Because you see, 
in the presence of thick darkness, a small mobile phone touch light can be of a great relevance. Because of the level of the darkness, small light becomes very, very significant. That is why he said that when sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Because when sin begins to increase, then grace can penetrate. Lord, bless the people. Lord, look at 100 days. He said, come, follow me. Then he took me in the spirit and I saw billionaires. He said, I'm not the one that is not blessing them. He asked and received not. Not that I didn't give. He did not receive. So there are people here who are not receiving. And this is what God told me. So he said, me and myself, it's a burden to me. I said, why? He said, I don't want them to be a point of reference for negative testimony. That this before I pray, 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 that their life is not changing. So that's why I saw God is God's concern. He wish you are not praying, you are broke. Everybody say, okay, nobody. But once you are praying, you are not receiving. Once you have postponed it. But I'm not watching them. Anybody be watching them? It is totally in a different plane. When you wake up eh, and you see your business is coming down. This business is going down. Instead of trying to revive it, ask God, what is the next step? God might have tempered with the business because he has another dimension. Yes, sir. Listen, listen. When the brook ministry ends, the brook will dry. The traveling tree that gives you shade will dry because now you must move to the widow's ministry. Now, this is a problem. When you enjoy the brook ministry and you want to move to the widow, you want to protect the brook. Ah. That is not gospel. Elijah, I have finished with two years. The ravens cannot come and give you food every time. Go to the widow's house. I have commanded the widow to sustain you. <laughs> but if you are not in, if you are, <laughs> to address something in the Bible, eh? Paul was trying to talk to a governor, Pablos, and then uh, there was a sorcerer who was trying to prevent the man from hearing the word. And the Bible said, Paul, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Then I went back and I was reading as of the apostle. The Bible said that when they took notice and saw the boldness of Peter, James, and John, they took notice that they'd been with Jesus. God was even explaining to me that the name Christianity is a nickname. Paul never used it. It started with the church of Antioch. It means that the word Christianity is a small, small, small Christ. Now, Constantine put it, and when he legalized the Christianity seed, and he put it there, none of the apostles, Paul never called anybody Christian, he called them saints. So one of the greatest trap we are finding ourselves in is when they call you a Christian. It's another message. When I go deep, I'll tell you. Now, hear this. Hear this. Even Jesus never mentioned the word Christianity. When he said, so tried to give the name to the people, he said, church. I will build my church, not Christians. Where does it come from? Are you getting it? But when they saw Peter, James, and John, who? Huh, then the Bible said they went back to their company, pray, and the place was shaking, and they were filled with the Holy Lord. said, this is what makes the difference. The Lord told me, son, this is what makes the difference. They were fear. The secret of Christianity is being fear. <laughs> That's all. Those who make it and those who advance, those who escape fornication, adultery, run away from beautiful girls and not touch them, the difference is when they are fear. The reason you are struggling with lust. The reason you are struggling with pornography, the reason you are struggling with stubbornness, the reason you are struggling with keeping your wife alone, the reason you are struggling is that you are not fear. And we are not conscious of being fear. We are pastors pastoring us who are not fear. And there's no hunger. Husbands are not fear. Wives are not fear. <laughs> That's the difference. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. 
When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one accord in one place. Suddenly, let come a mighty writing with it sat upon them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. So the jealousy, the enviness, the competitiveness, the carnality is the absence of being fair. This is the bottom line. Why should you be angry with somebody's gift? Why is somebody's gift threatening you? After all, it's a gift. If you see somebody give me a car, why do you get angry with the car? You want me to reject the car? No. I may be driving. So when you see somebody being used by God, it's a gift. But carnality will let you be angry. As if God make a mistake for using somebody. One of the greatest things that deceived me in the world, it almost deceived me. Thank God for his correction. You see, <laughs> even the fasting ministry, if you are not sharp, it can lift you to the realm of pride. Because you go to fast and come and you think that God should use you in a very special way. Do you know what the Lord told me? He said, listen to me. I am not going to use you because you fasted for that long. It's not a requirement. There are people who will use greater than you. They've never fasted. Because it is your fasting that makes me use them. So I will reward you for that. But that does not mean I'm going to use you on that level. Understand. <laughs> there is a great man of God in the 18th century called Chasfin. Very powerful evangelist. The man was a very strong preaching evangelist like Billy Graham. Chasfini has a prayer warrior called Father Nash. And Father Nash was the secret behind. The day Father Nash died, Chasfini couldn't do crusade again. The anointing was lifted. Lord, why? He said, the secret of your anointing is dead. Get ready to go. But because of lack of being filled, this generation doesn't understand. So we don't have the Annas and the Simons. When the Annas and the Simons start, they want to get to the pulpit. So there are people in the church, eh, once they've gone to fast and come, give you opportunity to preach. You are not a preacher. Yes, so the Lord told me, he said that, I was in waiting, he said that, he listed some evangelists, he said, pray for them. Pray for them and pray that before the year and they will win number of social and so souls. So listen, you are not fasting so that God will use you greater than somebody. Yes, you are fasting rather make somebody's gift sharp. Ah. But those rewards, it will be given when you get up there. Okay. <laughs> Understand it. Mm -hmm. Without Christ in you, your giving is useless. Because nobody can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. No. Anything you do without Christ in you has an ulterior motive. It takes Christ to genuinely love a woman. It takes Christ to genuinely love a man. It takes Christ not to take advantage of somebody you are helping. Without Christ, you have an ulterior motive. It takes Christ. It takes Christ. <laughs> if you come to the bedroom of a cat as a fish, and the cat let you go in Christ. Hey. This is the bottom line. So there is no man walking around who says, I'm not a womanizer. It is Christ in you. Hey. This is it. There is no woman that thinks you are a holy woman and you resist men. Hey, girl. Yes, sir. Check your mother. Check your grandmother. Yes, sir. I'm preaching. Check your background. Check whether all your family, your cousins are like you. Some of them know how to keep three men in the house without crashing. This one is in the kitchen. This one is a bedroom. This one is in the well. What are you talking about?
You will sleep with somebody's husband in a car and come and shower right now. And eat as if nothing has happened. It takes Christ not to do some things. No. So we are not so. Listen, stop. Because I say, when I'm here, I'm here. When I'm here, I'm here. No, no, no. It's not what we are. Apostle Paul said that. The things I don't want to do, that is what I do. The things I try to do, I can't do them. Oh, wretched man as I am. It is no me that do, but sin that lives in me. So you are not sinning because you feel like sin. It's a nature. It takes Christ. So don't trust anybody who is doing you good without Christ. There is an ulterior motive. No. 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 Don't trust them. No. No. If the man is buying you a car and giving you money and doesn't have Christ, be careful. No. Maybe you are being used for sacrifice. You are not aware. There is an ulterior motive. It takes Christ. It takes Christ. Without Christ, hey, everybody is a potential wicked person. The Adamic nature, it has nothing good. No. As I'm walking, I know I have a womanizing blood in me. It's dead. I was talking to somebody as I told my grandfather has 58 children. I am still taking care of some of my father's children. No. For me to marry one lady and stay with her and not get attracted, it takes Christ. And the desire and the ability to get closer to him and making every effort. Can I tell you this? Hey, the spiritual growth realm, the spiritual growth realm, the spiritual growth realm has no comfort zone. And those who live in a comfort zone can never grow spiritually. Hard work. The realms of spiritual growth, there is no comfort zone there. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You can never get used to fasting. Prayer is work. Prayer is work. Prayer is work. Bible study in our generation is difficult. Everything is pushing us away from Christ. The world system is teaching you to hate God. Why did Europe became a, came to the place of apostasy? Nail. Only 3% of people in Europe are serving God. Britain, where John Wesley started, almost everybody walking in the street was born again. Today, they were arrested for doing morning devotion. Everything in Babylon is teaching you to hate God. Coronavirus come and say, don't visit a brother. Don't visit a sister. Don't come to church. Church is more than just sitting on a Facebook. Church is not made for an isolation. Church is not an island. It's interdependable. Something from you rubs on me. Something from me rubs on you. Forsake you not know, the assemblies of your gathering. So when we come to church, it's more than somebody preaching. As I'm preaching now, a lot of things are happening in the realms of the spirit. Somebody will live here better. Somebody's life will advance. Somebody is going to be healed. Somebody will not die. Even though he has been sentenced just because he came to church. Because the name of the Lord, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The name of the Lord is a strong, the righteous run to it. So when they are chasing you, run to church. And they will leave you alone. So if they start telling you don't come to church, it's a major attack. Yesterday the Lord told me something. Your prayer life can attract an enemy to you. Your prayer life can bring enemies. We cannot find anything to accuse him. Let's find something about his prayer life. And they went to the king and said, King, make a decision today. Nobody should call any God except the God of this land. And Daniel opened his window. That's right. That's right. She used to pray with the window closing. Now when the decree can be opening, can this generation try? It? When we meet these people in heaven, what are we going to say? You are afraid to die. If you live, you live for Christ. If you die, we die for him. Whether we live or today, God told me something. Audibly, midnight prayer. He says, son, they that love their life will lose it. And those who lost it for my sake, they will gain it. I 
have become more evangelistic. So step out of comfort zone. We have left the place of coming, waking up and praying for 30 minutes and think you have prayed. Leave that place. Christianity has left the place of using daily bread. It's an old time Christianity. You have some kind of devotion book. Nothing wrong with those things. But sometimes you must read 20 chapters a day. Stay there and study the Bible. Sometimes take the book of Timothy and finish it. Mm -hmm. Last week, I stayed in the book of John alone. John, back to back, back to back. I read it more than 20 times. The Lord said, don't move. Stay with the book of John. I want to teach you something. It has left that stage. No. Don't go there and satisfy your religious conscience. You get some people... Uh, talking and then you go and do some devotion for 20 minutes to walk around. What you are dealing with, you need more than 30 minutes prayer. I didn't need to do what you know. It is more than 30 minutes prayer. It is more than one hour prayer to satisfy your conscience. Jesus Christ. Even the way we pray, the things we face, if we don't pray, what happens? Leave that room. Stop it. No, I don't understand. I pray, but still I'm going through some things. It's because of your destiny. It's because of where you are going. The devil has already picked it. Because of where you are going. Great destinies attract great battles. What did Joseph do to be in prison? How can you accuse somebody of a rape when he's a virgin? The psychology in it can torment you for death. But God doesn't take people up until he toughens them. <laughs> you must learn to stand the pressures of time. Stop those things. We have left that stage. No, this is not the time for God to wake you up and you continue sleeping. You are dealing with too many things. Sometimes the people dealing with you are very close. Very close. You love them, but they are destroying you at midnight. Very close. The Lord told me a prayer upon you. He said, Pray and let me show you wolf in a sheep's skin. And God starts exposing some things. I say, who? Say yes. This is it. A man's enemies are the people of his own house. Yes. So don't look at my house to look for your enemy. Check your own house. They are there. Look at your house. You'll find them there. So there are people you are praying for them. There are people you are supporting them. There are people you wish them were. But in the night you are their enemy. You don't spend 30 minutes in prayer. No, we have left that stage. Your average prayer life in a day should not be less than four hours. Maybe two hours in the morning, one hour in the afternoon, and some two hours before you go to sleep. Why can't you sleep and the crocodiles are chasing you? Nobody speaks in tongue for three hours and sleep and anybody chase them. Because he that speaking on unknown tongue, speaketh not to man but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How beat in the spirit he speaketh mystery. He that speaketh in unknown tongue edifies himself. When your spirit is charged, where is the witch is going to pass? No house flies step on hot food. I am just angry about the time of Christian life we are anticipating. I saw God show me, you are jokers. Bunch of jokers. People finish 14 days fasting back to their boyfriend's room. Mm. What kind of Christianity is that? Pastors molesting people in church. Sleeping with them. Don't just be afraid of a witch that is going to attack you. Let's pray for other churches who are angry about other churches progressing. That is where we are now. Canality. We can celebrate one another. No. It looks like other religions are more united. We can celebrate one another. So when God is blessing you in the midst of envious people, God is careful. Because when the blessing comes, they will kill you. Here comes the dreamer. Let's kill him and let's see what becomes of his dream. The reason they want to kill Joseph is a dreamer. That's all. So what do you do when you dream in the midst of people who don't dream? They will mash you like king. So this is your prayer life that you wake up and then you are there. You don't have, some of you don't have prayer life. You don't have, you don't have devotion life. You don't have any timetable for prayer. And I realized that in our generation, eh, if you are too busy to pray, then you are too busy. 
because the system will not let you create time for prayer. Everybody is chasing money they don't need. We are so much under pressure because we have taken what God must carry. Tomorrow is not in your hands. Jesus says sufficient for the day is an evil thereof. Do you know why you are under pressure? All oh, because of tomorrow. 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 I must build this. I must build that. Let me give you this scripture and then I close. There's a scripture in the book of Luke chapter 16 verse 16. Luke 16, 16. Look at this. Hmm. The law and the prophets. Everybody say the law. Everybody say the prophets. The law and the prophets were until John. That means that the last prophet of the Old Testament is John the Baptist, not Malachi. Hmm? The last prophet of the Old Testament is John the Baptist. He became the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Listen to this scripture. The law and the prophet were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. And every man presses. This is what we have come to. So it's not for jokers again. It's not for convenience, like the way you want it. No. It's not for butter and bread. It's not chibom. It's not domido. It has left that stage. The symbol of Christianity is not a crown, it's a cross. And if you want to follow me, then take up your own cross. So there is a bigger cross that saves us, but everybody has a little, little cross. Am I talking? The Bible said the kingdom is preached and everyone is what? Pressing. So until you press, your prosperity will not emerge. Until you press, you will not have soundness in your matrimonial home. The law and the prophets were until John. <laughs> Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. This is what we have mixed it. We have preached Christianity instead of the kingdom. It's another message. The kingdom of God is preached. And Every man or woman, every brethren and sister is doing what? Pressing. Hey. So when we declare 14 days fast, it's a pressing. <clears throat> every man does what? Press. Those who will not press, they will not go. Matthew chapter 25 from verse number 1. <laughs> Matthew 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. We took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now, everybody in this room is a bride. The groom is Christ. And one day we'll go and meet him. So, a parable is a heavenly language with earthly meaning. That is why the other translation is an illustration. They took their lamb mm, and then the Bible said, went forth to meet the bridegroom. So, it normally, 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 in the wedding, this is very interesting, in the wedding, eh, it is the grooms that go to look for the brides. And normally in the wedding, of all the wedding are waiting, the grooms come first before the bride. In the spirit realm is the vice versa. <clears throat> the brides are sitting somewhere waiting for the groom to come. This is spiritual. And the Bible said, five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Take notice. Come back to verse number one and watch this. Watch this. Then said the king of heaven like him to what? Everybody said ten virgins. So number one, in terms of purity, none of them have seen a man. So it's not enough to look around. 
as a, as a, so virginity is not righteousness. Don't, don't stand on your virgin, virginity to go to heaven. I don't need Christ because I'm a virgin. Continue. No. This is the bottom line. So the ten of them, the Bible said they were all virgin. We took the alarms and went forth to me. Now, number two, all of them were ready to meet the groom. They were all in church. They were all preparing to meet the groom. They have heaven in mind. Oh, Jad Yeshu Beba. Hey. The more I read the Bible, the more I come and say, Lord, mercy, 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 mercy. All of them were ready to go and meet the groom. All of them were in church. They were anticipating. They, were, they, were, they, they have a desire. They, 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 they have an expectation. All of them have kept their virginity. All of them were living a holy life. Not that men were not chasing them. The secret of the groom coming to unveil you is determined by your lamp. It has nothing to do with your wedding gown. It has nothing to do with your virginity. The qualification is that for them to accept you as a groom, your lamp must have. So holding a brand new lamp without oil inside is a brand new car without fuel. Stagnation. So it's not enough. For you to sit in the church and say, I'm not fornicating. If the groom doesn't come at the time you are expecting, can your lamp stand? That means that as far as the groom has not come, anyone or us with that extra lamp, our lamp can go off. Where does the lamp go off? I have sung in a choir. I've been very committed to the things of God. Until when I turned 38, I saw I was not married. And I met a guy in Portis. And he started playing games around me. Because all my mind is to get married. I am doing everything to make sure I will marry. I don't care if I have to give my body. Because this guy is threatening that if I don't let me sleep with him, sleep with me, the marriage might not come on. So, at the time of compromising, mm. is the time the lamp goes. Hey. So it's not that they were just walking around. They have an expectation. They know. The Bible says they've tested the power to come, the power to be. They become a snake who has vomited and eating their vomit back. Let me tell you something. I've seen pastors backslide. I've seen old just your sisters who say we don't need that your God. I've seen it. I've seen it. Lamp is off. So let me tell you, me and you, this is what Paul said. This is the way Paul put it. Now what thought from me there? What of him or the home? But near yen is said, O Jina Hono, on she ye, because of your height. When you fall, it depends on the gravity that is bringing you down. Pelilio's time shall come. Men shall be lovers. Look at it. Look at it. Am I, am I explaining something? Then said the kingdom of heaven be like you know, to ten virgins. Wait lamb their lamb and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Wow. And five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Look at it. Ha, ha, ha. They that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. So which are the people who lambs are going down? They wake up in the morning, they don't pray. One month they have not read the Bible. 
They will come to church and close and stand at the car park and gossip. Lamp is going down. The more you grow in the Lord, there are some things you stay out of it. You don't have time. No, 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 no. Those who are pursuing God, they don't have time for gossip. They are not interested. You can't become their friend. They are too sensitive. They are, the first conversation they got grief, they will not engage you in another one. Too many careless Christians. You know the boy is not a Christian, but you are following him. Your lamp is down. It's going down. It's going down. Every time you come to church to fast and pray for repentance, how many times will you repent? It's amazing a church like this. That we keep preaching holiness. There are men who are God has blessed them. Lovely, caring, quiet, gentle, ready to give everything wife. But they are still not satisfied. They are not satisfied. They have one girlfriend in the office. They have one in church. And they have one, two at their friends' neighborhood. And they are walking around. Many Christians are living as if Jesus will never come back. No, it's not in our vocabulary. Today, God told me another thing. He said, do you know the greatest problem of the church? I said, what is it, Lord? He said, spiritual barrenness. What do you mean by spiritual barrenness? You don't win souls. Remember the last time you told somebody Jesus loves you? you? It's not in your timetable. When we became born again, we were doing morning devotion and going around and preaching. Today, people are in church. All they are looking for is to stand at the pulpit and preach. That's all. So, they are not ready to do God's way. They are ready for show. That's what it takes. Young people, they are ready. They should give me an opportunity to preach. There are so many pulpits you can create. When you walk around Pram Pram, you see those boys sitting there, 10 of them, and gossiping. It's a pulpit. Hear me. When I take you on a crusade ground and I call you, I say, girl, today, this Sunday, you are preaching in this man's church. It's a puppet. You don't need to preach like me. Be yourself. You can't be like me. No, you don't have to be like me. Be yourself. You can learn some things from me, but God will not give you my exact anointing. No. I am unique in the way God has made me. Ah. And you are unique in the way God has made you. Accept who you are and operate from your anger. If you are still there and some guys come around you and tell you they love you and all you can reply is to insult them, you are kinda. It might be opportunity for their salvation. Shunamite. Listen. I used to think the Ten Commandments is for do's and don'ts. What a blessing to wait upon the Lord. Thou shalt not that. The Lord said, No. I'm not a do's and don'ts go. The reason for the commandment is that I'm looking for relationship. So you shall not make any other gods behind me that have relationship with me alone. Tomorrow I'll take you there. The Lord told me, say, I'm not a do's and don'ts go. I'm looking for relationship. The reason for the do's and the don'ts is that if you do this, this is a consequence. I love you so much, I don't want you to go through it. Sheesh. Hear this. Hear this. If you step out of this auditorium, I don't know whether you're sleeping in Portes or you're going home, and somebody called you on the phone and said, David, I just thought about you. God has laid on my heart to do something for you. Do you have a dollar account? He said, no. Okay, open one. I want to transfer $5 million into your account. What will you do with the money? Quiet. I told one of my sons, and I think mommy was there. I said, listen, there are people in church, and when God gives them a blessing, they don't even secure it. You get a contract, you have gone to buy cars. I don't even think you have paid your tithe. I don't think you have paid your first fruit. I say, how will you get the next one? How?
Hear this. I'm closing with this. The prophet didn't go there and knock at the door. Who is that? Uh, but please, my name is Prophet Elisha. I come to make a cry. Let me check. This is how the generation want their men of God to be. When I was talking to God about things like getting, the Lord told me, don't just go there and preach the gospel to people. Support the poor. He said, there are people with sicknesses that is curable. But there's no money for medicals. And he said, some of the people you do them good today. Don't forget the principle I told you on Friday. Everything you do as a sometime becomes your past. And that past eventually will meet you in the future. So there's nothing you brush under the top. Everything you are doing will meet you. So the Lord told me, say, some of the people you do good to them now. It will be a blessing to you tomorrow. Listen. There is a man of God in Nigeria who is fond of giving people scholarship. One day, his wife came under some attack and they were in a hospital. And there was one particular doctor who was on duty and the doctor would not close. And extreme care and calling other doctors to help. And they were managed. Say, you have been so careful. He said, Sir, you know, he gave me scholarship to go to medical school. Without you, I wouldn't have been a doctor. When I saw you, I've never met you. Because some of the people you give us scholarship, you don't even know us. But I saw that it's time to pay back. Listen to this. Don't keep money in your bank account for the kingdom to suffer. If need be. If need be. Move from giving to sacrifice. The verse has come. Will you go and take some? But let me warn you. Whether you like it or not, one day you, you will take it. <laughs> Babylon knows how to give it to you. So you better build your faith for it. I can tell you one million ways why they can get it for you. There are people in Ghana who works in some diplomatic embassies. They have already injected it. Some people work in some embassies. They are already. The thing is, take it or lose your job. Mm -hmm. Some of you get an appointment like this. They will call you from America. We just saw your this thing. We are interested. We want to come and invest in your company. We are investing five million dollars for the first year. Please, can you come to the U.S. for conference? Then you read it on CNN. Nobody enter America without vaccine. What they say? I'm telling you. So listen to what I'm preaching. Hear it. Say, baby, be kuma and kawa wo vaccine. Who don't tell me start to wo vaccine? What the two weeks? No. Who can tell you the yo? No, God is straight. It happened to me. It happened. I was traveling somewhere with my wife. We are going to preach. Sometimes when I, I was on an assignment, I was traveling to go and preach somewhere with my wife and family. Go to the airport, checking in. The man said, please, your yellow fever car. 
No, no, I don't have yellow fever. I even say, look at my eyes. I don't have yellow fever. I told the man, he laughed. Because of many minimum power, I listen to you a lot. He said, I wish I can let you go. If you get to the country, you'll be harassed. He said, what will happen to you there? You don't want to like it. It's a requirement. He showed me, he said, this is a requirement. We are not supposed to permit anybody to sit in a plane without six months. Was it six months or so? He said, you must have it. And I'm saying, I'm going to go to the airport. I'm going to go to the airport. can I take the certificate and not what I did? He said, no. He said, when you get there, they have a system that can detect that you have not taken the injection. Prophet Nana said, I'm going to go I am young, said, Nurse, and Hey, daddy, minimum. They didn't power him, and he just said, I walk on here, daddy, me, daddy, me. I have a hustle. This girl injected me. Yes. My children were laughing at me. Because the last time I took an injection, maybe 20 something years ago. I told them, if somebody has done this, his eyes will be yellow. Look at my eyes. I, I, am I saying I won't go and preach in a program advertised because of yellow fever? So lift up your faith. Oh, lift it up. Enter the realm of supernatural strength. Lift up your faith. If Jesus is on earth, will he be afraid of a vaccine? And that crisis in you. This is it. The more you may, wait, 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 the more your fear is increasing. When they ask you, tell us the reason why you are not taking it. Do you know why? Because of what you have heard. But you don't have proofs. So if you have gone to the theater, do surgery, give you anesthesia, is that what they call it? It's a miracle you get back to life. If there is something that must kill you, it has killed you a long time. You are unkillable. Stand on the authority of God's word and declare to the devil that whatsoever is born of God overcome it. And lift up your spirit. Oh, prophet, and I will not take a vaccine if need be. I'm not going to walk to the hospital, but I know you will come to a place. The Lord has told me you are going to travel the world and preach. Yes. Airlines has already started making advert. The time is coming. If you don't have vaccine certificate, you will not sit in a plane. Today, I received a message from my Israeli friends. Prof, we are so happy that you have got a vaccine. All those who are coming to it, right, go and take it quickly, and then you can come. <laughs> this is it. So now, they are making it a law in Israel that if you have not taken vaccine, you can't enter there. Because Israel is almost, almost, they have almost injected all their citizens. So I, I, I better lift up your faith. And you are a coward, and you are a coward, and you are a coward, and you are what are you talking about? Men with frog spermantosia that has entered your system that the blood of Jesus has purged it up. It's not a vaccine. Fear will leave you. Apprehension will leave you. Anxiety will leave you. You will look at the devil and tell him, I shall not die. A man will take him by your wall with your kiss. You are with us in the house. And your verse in the Bible. I will say, 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 your friend who who move we are saying, Prophet Nana, baby, I'm free, ba. 
any day, I Jimmy. The arrows the enemy are shot. I will be stupid to stand in front of God and be afraid of a vaccine. If the vaccine cannot kill the one who did it, it can't touch me. Forget it. You think we are just walking like that? You think we are just walking? Like, hey, I want to tell you that by the time we finish these three days, you are not a human being, you are a spirit. I say you are moving from information to revelation. Amen. What are you talking about? Where I'm coming from, I am a spirit. If there is anything in the vaccine that destroys, when it touches my body, that thing will die instantly in the vaccine. I'm not looking for it. I know it from my heart. So don't, don't worry yourself and walk around with fear and apprehension and anxiety. And when they are talking, don't talk so. Don't, make, don't open your mouth. Don't talk. Amen. They say, hey, when you take vaccine, you cannot give birth. There are people, they have remove their womb, they give birth to three places. Can vaccine stop God from giving you a child? Then you don't know your God. The people that do know their God, 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 they shall And they will do as well. God bless you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the message. For further inquiries, contact Well Prayer Center PO Box GP21421 Accra or telephone plus 233-274-009933 or plus 233-242-472655. Email us on info at portercity.com or visit our website www.portercity.com. Location plot 16 Mutual Road, Pram Pram, Greater Accra, Ghana.